Hi and welcome to Genesis. Genesis comes in two versions, Pro and SQL. The Genesis Pro is built on a Fox Pro database and the Genesis SQL is built on a Microsoft SQL database. They are identical in looks and feel, it just depends on what database you prefer to have them run on. So let's go ahead and dive right into the software. First thing you can notice here is your control panel. This task organizer lays out everything nicely for you, so if we go ahead and click on the task organizer. As you can see, you have your different tasks located right down here. A lot of these tasks you'll notice will be done automatically for you, but you can come in here and gladly uh, take care of any of these tasks manually anytime you need to. So adding on new employee may not do it every day, but you can come in here and just click you on add a new employee. It'll take you through the ropes. Pull the clocks, which will be done automatically for you. Fix any missing punches and absences. You will want to take care of that one uh, as often as possible. Monthly task can be done automatically again for you, but you might want to back up your data. Uh, you can do that again as often as you like. Annual task, the system is smart, but not smart enough to know the holidays from year to year, so you might want to come in here for a minute and just put in next year's holidays, uh, or sit down for five minutes and do the next five years if you'd like to. You can do as far as you want into the future. Program the clocks for daylight savings time. The system can take care of that for you. We can even run reports for you automatically if you need to, and have them sent right to your email if you wish. Payroll task, pull the clocks, make sure you have the most up-to-date time. Again, the system will take care of it for you. Fix any missing punches and absences. For every in punch, you do want to have an out. Run reports to verify everything looks good here in our software, because once everything looks good here, just simply click on export to payroll, and that will create a file. That file will be in the format that your payroll software requires. You can simply take that file and import it right into your software, or send it over to your payroll rep. Let's go ahead and lastly take a look at the system setup. System setup, we can actually take care of a lot of this for you, but if you ever need to, uh, we always give you permission to come in here and make any adjustments and changes, uh, such as adding up a new holiday, maybe a new department, or even creating a new shift if you need to. Again, that was a task organizer. Let's go ahead and close out of here. And let's dive right into the employee information. Go ahead and click on the employee. First thing you'll notice is your employees located right top here and their time card located right over to the right. Simple enough is clicking on the employee's name. You can see a couple different uh, letters located right next to their name and if we go over to the key here, this distinguishes what those letters mean. After using the software for a day or two, you'll know what they mean. But we have a couple missing punches here. And if I just double click, it's going to open up the field and pull in their schedule time. And if everything looks good here, I can simply say OK. But if I need to make adjustments, I can hit up or down on my uh, keyboard, or I can just simply right click. And let's say they came in early for me for that day, I can say OK. And that time will now be added right into their time card with the totals here for the day. I can also see that I have one hour unpaid lunch that is automatically deducted for me. That's a system setting. You can have that if you want to or not. You can pay it or not pay it if you wish. We have a few other key features. So if I come down to multiple miscellaneous and click on that, this will allow you to put in a vacation day if you wanted to. So I can go ahead and click on the down, drop down box. And you can see here I have a bunch of different payable types. I'm just going to go ahead and put in a vacation time. Specify that exactly for how long. I can right click again. Just select for eight hours. So we'll do vacation time for eight hours. And let's go ahead and select it for Friday the 28th. Once I hit apply, it's going to deduct their balance. And as you can see here, it's already warning me that they're going into the negative. Now I can proceed if I want to or cancel out if I need to. Uh, but for example, I'm just going to say OK. Once I say OK again, that time will now be posted right into our time card. You can post vacation time or any other benefit type uh, as far as you want into the future. Let's go ahead and take a look at the schedules. The schedule here is for an individual schedule. And you can see there are different schedules. Just by clicking on their name, you can change different schedules, but you can see the vacation time I post there again for Friday. Uh, to have someone work or not work is just simply enough as checking the box or unchecking it if you don't want them to work. Again, we check it, and we can even double click here, and this will actually pull in our schedule detail. Schedule detail, you can simply drop down, hit a drop down, and you have your different shifts you may have already defined. Uh, you may have a floater or a flex shift, just means they're going to work that day. It might not necessarily mean a start or end time. Or we might need to do a shift on the fly. So we go ahead and select the ruler here if we need to. And we can go ahead and uh, select the appropriate time that they may uh, not have a shift defined for that, but we might have a doctor's appointment or need to have someone come in a little early. We can also define their department level information. You can also have job information. You can even take it three more steps if you need to uh, with our job costing module. 
I can update the rest of the week if I wish, but I'm going to say OK here. And now I shift override uh, for that specific day for 6 a.m. till 4. Another key feature is the rotating shifts, which you can basically take a window of time and have that mirrored and rotate as far as you want to the future. So if you want that specific week and you just want to rotate that week in and week out, you can gladly do that. Or if you have a couple weeks or even a month for that matter, take that month and you can actually mirror that and rotate it forward as far as you want into the future. Let's go ahead and take a look at the transactions. Here in the transactions, we can see anytime someone clocks in or clocks out, it creates a transaction along with a badge number associated with it. This badge number is just an identifier, but what it does do is identify that the employee actually is the one that punched in or punched out here. Now you can see the vacation day has no badge number associated with it. And now you can come down here and actually see what supervisor is the one that actually created that transaction. We also have a transaction detailed report, which is just like an audit trail, will allow you to see who made the changes, what time and date they made the change, and any other adjustments. Let's go ahead and take a look at the status section. Here in the status section, this allows you to know what policy they belong to. You might have a full-time policy, part-time policy, salary policy. Each of these policies can affect things such as overtime, or even shift differentials, or per diems. You can even mark an employee as active or inactive in case you have any seasonal workers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the benefits section. Here in the benefits, we have personal day, sick, vacation. You can have as many types as you want here. I have three examples here. And you can actually call them anything you will. You can also set up your different accrual rules for each type. You may accrue daily, but you might only give it to them once a month for that matter. Again, we have many different rules that we can have set up for you, but they can see what they've given, what they've taken, pending, which means it's been taken, just hasn't occurred yet. Once you add up those three, you can also see what they have left over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the message section. Here are messages. Anytime someone clocks in or clocks out, they'll see their first initial last name. You can also come in here and add a message if you want to and have that sent down to the clock. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wages. Here in the wages, you do not have to actually have a wages in your software, but if you want to do anything like budgeting or do any kind of department level wages, you can gladly have that information posted in here. You can do global wages as you can see. We can also come in here at department. You can have your department level wages along with even a daily wage. Go ahead and close out of here. Again, you can also have your salary information in here, and you can even take it at least a couple of steps further if you need to. This is nice if you're going to do any kind of budgeting or job costing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the badges. If someone loses their badge, you can simply come in here, edit that badge, and mark it as invalid. If they find that badge in their couches or their jeans, you can mark it as valid again. And as you can also see, we can actually put an expiration date on those badges. We have another feature here, which is the profile lockout. With Genesis, you can add on it many different additional modules. One of those additional modules is the profile lockout. This will actually allow you to not only restrict access to clocks so people cannot clock in and out, it can also actually restrict access to doors. So if you'd like to do anything with access control, the pro profile lockout feature might be something you want to look into. Let's go ahead and take a look at the clocks. As I was stating before, the clocks might actually be located in different locations. Uh, they might even be in a specific department. So people might want to res be restricted to what clock they're actually allowed to use. So in this example, you can, you're allowed to come in here and add people to certain clocks that may then prefill some of their information for them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Detail tab. Here in the Details, if I come down here and hit Edit, the only information we do require is a first name, last name, employee number, and their hire date. Everything else in here is just extra for you. We even give you six user definable fields, in addition with a couple of different modules that we have, such as the web clock, occurrence rating, which is basically like a point system, our benefit accruals, which is what tracks your benefits, such as sick vacation and pay time off, and then we have our holidays, groups, and divisions. Uh, they can use as filters. Again, another module you can use is the PC clock, which actually allows people to clock in and out via a PC that can have a shortcut located right on our desktop. And of course you can drop in a, a photo if you wish. Let's go ahead and close out of here. And again, that was the employee information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scheduled section. Here in the multiple schedule adjuster, you can actually see all of your employees listed here in addition to their weekly schedule. You can also break that and filter down by group and division, in addition to making any adjustments that are needed throughout that week, just by double-clicking.
Again, you can check the box or uncheck it if you want them to work. You can always use the drop down and select your different shifts that you may have, along with your additional schedule adjustments. And of course, you always have this print button down here and quickly print out your schedule. Let's close out of here and right over to the approval editor. The approval editor is very nice and, and lets you see all your missing punches and absences and report on it. So let's take a look here. We got Carol. She has a missing punch. If I double click on her name, it'll take me right to her time card and I can see that there's a missing punch. I just double click here and now that actually is pulled in her schedule time. If everything looks good there, I simply say OK. That now posts in a time, totals up her hours for that day. Again, I can always see her schedule if I need to and even look at any transactions if I need to make any adjustments. Closing out of here, and simply now I can see Carol's name is gone from the list. I also see there is an in late out early uh, attendance fractions. Let's go ahead and close out of here. Our other section here is the status board. Allows to see who's in, who's out. If anybody is working, you'll see the green dot. You also have a lunch feature, and you can actually see when the last transaction took place, in addition to what clock that was that was used. Another nice feature is you can quickly print this out in case of any emergencies. Let's close out of here. The polling button, you really don't have to worry about this one. This is actually to manual pull your time clocks, which can actually be all done through the auto process feature here. This can also allow you to run reports automatically and have them sent straight to your email. So if I click on reports here, you can see all the different reports that come can with the software, such as your different time cards and daily hours. If I scroll down a little bit here, we can also see some summary reports that are listed with the software. Over to our attendance reports, annual attendance report, very nice for reviews, who's in, who's not in, or who's in by shift. Exceptions, absences, overtime hours, no lunch punches, approved time cards, unapproved time cards. Employees can even accept a time card with their employee self-service function. Go into the HR. We can see actual versus scheduled, approaching weekly overtime, which is another nice one, and even a seniority report. Schedules, we can actually check our coverage, individual schedules, who's scheduled, and your individual scheduled by department. Wages, of course you can keep track of your wages in here to do any job costing or budgeting. The job costing with the labor distribution report, which allows you to see how many hours are actually going to a certain department, or even break it down by your location, department, and even a specific employee if you want to. And let's take a look at our listings. Our listings here with the attendance code listings, uh, birthday listings, uh, employee dress listings, the list goes on and on, as you probably can see. And our exports, which we export out to all the major vendors that are out there. If you actually don't have a report that, that you need, we have a generic along with our build your own delimiter report if you need to. So let's go ahead and take a look at a time card report. If I simply hit run, I can then have my date range selected here. If it's a pay period or a certain monthly or yearly report if I want to run, I can add my employees just by double clicking them or simply hit add all and say OK. And I can use my other parameters here to sort them by and also do it by department if I wish. And then I can even output it right to the screen, to a printer, to a file such as PDF or Excel, or even send it straight to the email. In this example, I have a time card report, which you can have your logo right up top here if you want. And here's my employee with their start and stop times, their total hours for each day, their totals for that week or that pay period. And if we want, we can print that out right from here, or we can simply just close out and run another report if we want to. But again, remember that you can have any of these reports run automatically and have them sent right to you via email. This concludes our Genesis Pro demonstration. Have a wonderful day.